indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the entire board is present tonight. We certainly have a quorum, and we'll get down to business. Uh, I'll begin with entertaining any additions or deletions to tonight's published agenda. All right, with none offered, those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. We, the agenda stands approved. At this time, I'll open it up to a public comment. If there's any member of the public president who'd like to comment on tonight's agenda items. All right, with none, none, none offered, we'll move into the consent agenda and ask uh, the treasurer to pick that. Yes, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to uh, recommend approval of consent agenda 15-035, which is approval of the minutes of the June 8th, 2015th regular meeting and the approval of check register dated June 19th, 2015. Support. Okay, moved by Treasurer Van Oss, seconded by Trustee Budney on the consent agenda. Are there any comments, questions from the board on the consent agenda? All right, with none offered, those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The consent agenda stands approved. We will move on to action items. I'll ask Trustee Posey ask to take it. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, the first action item, action nine, item number one, it comes from Cliff St. Pierre. The Greenways Open Space Committee, and it is a proposed a recommended action uh, to seek quotations for the Manchester Trail Rehabilitation and Maintenance Project. Support. Thank okay, you. moved by Trustee Posey, yes, seconded by Trustee Smith. I think we can we can remember that I turned this all into your last meeting, and uh, it's a nice project, spearheaded by a middle school student by the name of Mitch Lewis, and working well with Cliff. We'd like to see this get done rather quickly and uh, appreciate your positive action on it. Okay, so right now we're looking at, we're approving, the motion is to approve uh, uh, Mr. Lewis to go out for bids. Well, approve, oh. the, the, approve the township to go out for bids. Uh, well, okay. Thank you for that correction. The township will be going out for the bids for the uh, uh, rehabilitation and improvement to the Manchester Trail. Uh, any comments, questions from the board? Mr. Mr. Budney. Mr. Supervisor, I just want to let the residents know that the, the cost of this project is coming out of funds that the open space already has. It's not coming out of anything from the general fund. It's not coming out of anything new. It's, it's money that's there for, for projects like this, and they're just spending it the way they should. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Budney. Other Questions or comments? All right, I think this is a, a worthwhile endeavor. The, when Cliff held the open house, uh, the few people who came, one woman was claimed her and her grandson were afraid to go into the woods. Hopefully a nice open trail will alleviate some of those concerns. So with that, um, those in favor of approving the open Greenways Open Space Committee's Request to seek quotations for the Manchester Open Space Area Trail slash Rehab Project, um, June 8, 2015 proposal. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not offered. That stands approved. Uh, action item number two, uh, once again, Mr. Posey asks. Please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Once again, I'm not used to leading. Well, uh, well, this second proposal was another one that was passed out to the Township Board at our last meeting. Uh, it is a proposed action to award repair for bike path bridges and uh, it is a single source design build proposal in the amount of $39,992.10. Moved by Trustee Posey, ask thank you, is seconded by Trustee Smith. This is a little more involved. I can tell you a little bit about it. The uh, bike path committee has worked rather diligently, like they always do, uh, getting their ducks in a row to make sure that their recommendations are well supported. Uh, we went out and, and solicited some some assistance from the public and got the assistance from the gentleman who built two out of these three bridges. Uh, his name is Wes Pfeiffer. And uh, he spent several hours with us as a committee and easily 100 hours walking this bridge and all three bridges and coming up with recommendations 
virtually board by board. Uh, he's found some things in the, in the bridges that if we take care of them now, they ought to last another 25 years. But if we don't, we're going to suffer some failure prematurely. And that is primarily in that punking out that he talks about, which is wood rot. Uh, he can fix all that, and uh, we're very comfortable with this gentleman and, and this proposal. I would ask that this township board consider its approval. Okay, other qu questions, Mr. Bu Mr. Budney. <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, Wally. Uh, I, I understand that you're you're comfortable with him, but I'm just wondering: is there is there any any other reason that you're not going out for bids? You just uh, well, we have we have an estimate. We have a budget balance or a surplus for, in our fund for bike paths and bridge repairs, number one, and so this is a maintenance item, and. Uh, if you break out the three as, as he did in this proposal, uh, you'll see a, a lot of variance in the amount of work per each one, but it's pretty detailed. And uh, it seems to me that with all of the work that was done, putting together the proposal and all of the background and the bike path committee walking it, uh, there's a lot of effort already in here that if another person was asked to quote, wouldn't know the bridges like this man does and would have to spend an equivalent amount of time, which he probably would be expected to be reimbursed for. So those, this, this bridge estimate for three bridges repaired would probably come back significantly higher than that 39000 Thanks, Juan. Hey, other, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Treasurer. Is, he, is this the same guy that's done repairs on these bridges that, up till now? This is correct. He uh, did some repairs to us last fall, and that's where we got the got wind of further problems. Okay, thanks. Other questions, comments on the uh, bridge repair? All right, none offered. Those in favor of a, let's see, approving the uh, approving the bid, the single source design build dated May 11, 2015, and that's GI-15-5-02 to PIBC comma LLC in the amount of $39,992.10 to repair the bike path bridges, Grow Road, Meridian Road, and Thoroughfare Road. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered? Well done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, board. Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ranka. <coughs> Mr. Supervisor, I'd move to adopt the State of Michigan 2015 amendments to the Freedom of Information Act as outlined and published as a Grosville Township FOIA procedure and guidelines. Public summary of the FOIA procedures and guidelines and the Grosville Township Freedom of Information Act request detailed cost itemization form as defined by the State of Michigan. Okay, moved by Clerk Rankin, seconded by Trustee Budney. So a little bit of the background on this. So the state of Michigan. Good luck with it. <laughs> Good luck with I'll be this. as high level as I can. The state of Michigan changed several things to the FOIA, uh, FOIA Act or the Freedom of Information Act, primarily to standardize costs across the state of the Michigan and also um, kind of standardize the, the process, if you will. So rather than going up, um, creating our own process, we followed the MTA guidelines um, went through and, and we think that's going to be the best fit for Grozeal from an economic standpoint and also from a uh, um, uh, meeting the the act as, as close as we can I mean just for you know for information this is uh, you know roughly like a 40 page document so knowing that the MTA attorneys have already gone through it and uh, if there's any challenges to it will be very easy for us to say yeah this is the exact same thing that uh, most of the rest of the state of Michigan is following so I think it's a uh, it's it's a pretty straightforward thing for us uh, it does follow the state of michigan act and it is um it's the the, the same same discussion we had in, the, in our in our board discussion meeting uh, two weeks ago the yeah, freedom of information i believe is an offshoot of the open meetings act of public act something or other of 1976 and it's if you read too much about investigations you'll see where some communities abused would be too kind a word where a simple request got a $2,000 tab, and uh, the news agencies ran with that, I guess, beat up the legislature, and it became a pretty involved. This, I think our township has been very, very generous and, uh, um, you know, accommodating with public requests. Usually we don't charge anything for a simple request. Obviously some other agencies weren't so forthcoming, so legislature stepped in. 
So any other questions, comments on the uh, changes to the Freedom of Information Act for Gross Hill Township? All right, with none offered, those in favor? Yes, has come on. Of approving the state of Michigan's 2015 amendments to the Freedom of Information Act as outlined and published, the Gross Hill Township FOIA procedures and guidelines, public summary of the Freedom of Information Information Act procedures and guidelines and the Gross Hill Township Freedom of Information Act request detailed cost itemization form as defined by the state of Michigan. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered? Thank you, Clerk Ranka. Um, Trustee Malvesto. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, the proposed uh, uh, item here is to award the Universal Access Kayak Launch Bid. Uh, this is to approve the 2015 shoreline work and the universal kayak access launch. I'm not sure if I'm going through. Uh, installation project to U.S. Boat Hoist in the amount of $18,612. Support. Okay, uh, moved by uh, Trustee Posiask and seconded by, I believe it was Trustee Budney. Um, are you going to give the background? Would you like I, uh, I will. Boyd or I'm not sure if I lost my mic or not. Um this goes, this goes back quite a while when uh, uh, Tim Roney uh, had applied for a uh, a block grant to uh, install a uh, uh, basically as a handicapped kayak launch facility, ADA, and uh, it's taken quite a while. We it was approved. It's taken quite a while to uh, to get it installed. None of these monies come from the township. Everything is uh, out of uh, block grant money. Uh, so there's not going to be again. There will not be a cost uh, for the installation or the or the uh, facility itself to the township, but we will. It will be our asset, and we will be the beneficiaries going forward uh, with this launch. But uh, the township board granted approval of a construction and installation contract with Pavex in the amount of sixty-eight thousand three hundred forty-three dollars forty-seven cents in July of two thousand fourteen for the universal launch, installation, and an ADA parking area. Uh, but due to the delay in the issuance of the MDEQ permit, the contractor uh, submitted a demand for extras in a total of $102,657, and the contract was canceled in September of 2014. So while discussing the matter with Wayne County CDBG staff, due to budget constraints, it was suggested the township approach the project in different phases, which is what we have done. And phase one was the purchase of the easy dock structure, which we have received, and it's in storage. Phase two is the shoreline work and the universal uh, kayak launch uh, installation project, which before is before the township board for the consideration uh, tonight. Phase three is the, is the, inst uh, the parking lot installation, uh, and the documents for phase three are currently in, pre in preparation. The uh, estimated project budget, do you want me to read the whole thing or just are we, are we satisfied? I'm good with the rest right. of the board. Uh, so this, these this are this has all been this has all been uh, voted on and approved before. Uh, it's just that we're down to the uh, to the point where we can start the installation. Again, there's no township funds involved. It's all, all came out of community block grant, and uh, it will be our asset, and we will be the beneficiary. So going forward, uh, this launch will be open not only to uh, uh, ADA. But also to the uh, island, uh, you know, the public in general. So I, I'd appreciate uh, supporting this. That's it. Okay. Hey, questions, comments for the board, Mrs. Smith. How much have we actually received from Wayne County so far? I'm because I don't have the exact dollar figure in front of me. I'm going to ask uh, Dale Ream for this project or for. I guess, Black I mean, if it's broken total. into phases and the county's concerned about paying, <laughs> I'm just wondering yeah. how much have we actually received from it, them so we, far. We've already expended um, the th purchase, $30,768. Yep. And prior to this, um, through the original engineering design, and the first time we bid it, we spent administration and engineering fees in the amount of $13,000. But have we received any money from the county? So, okay, yes. she's waving her hat. Okay. Yes. All right. That's Do we correct. have any fear that we're not going to receive the rest in phases? No, not at all. Not at all. We yeah, are, are these not federal funds? Yes, sir. Okay, so they, the, I'm sure that as much as the county would like to get a hold of some of it, uh, they're federal funds and they will, they get channeled through the county, but they will get to us. This, 
uh, we've, we've talked about this before. This, uh, this launch area will be at the south end of the, uh, of the current marina, and uh, there, will be, there will be paved parking. There will be uh, paved walkways to the, the access ramp, and uh, after that, uh, it will be accessible uh, for a person who has disabilities to uh, get in and out of a kayak on their own, well, w with some assistance. And, uh, again, it's, it's going to be an asset. And uh, literally the entire downriver area, Wayne County, is, is just waiting for us to uh, put this in. Uh, they can't wait. Uh, they want to know if we're going to have grand opening ceremonies uh, the whole 10 yards. It's, but, again, it's going to be an asset for us. And it will certainly give us a good uh, uh, picture in front, of the, in front of the surrounding communities. It will it'll be a good, a good thing for us. And I'm, I've been in support of kayaking for quite a while now. Uh, we've got a pretty we got a, we have a pretty good uh, uh, following that uh, use the launch. It's only going to get better. Other questions, comments, Mr. Budney. Uh, uh, how many people use the launch now? Besides me. Besides you. <laughs> we we run a, we run we uh, we run different groups, but on Tuesday nights, weather permitting, we run anywhere from uh, twelve to sixteen people uh, launching at any given time. During the rest of the week, it's hard to tell because there's really nobody, there's really nobody there paying attention to it. All right, so we we don't really know. I, you know, I've 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 been against this project from the beginning, not because of the project itself, a kayak launch. I'm all in favor of that, but for the dollars involved, and I I know it sounds good when you say, hey, none of these are Grozeal dollars, but they. Uh, their taxpayer dollars and aside from that regardless of where the money is coming from it it, sh it is upon this board to spend whatever dollars come into the township properly and uh, not not properly but you know are in, in a reasonable manner this is just another one of the pro one of the projects that come up that it's a good idea but it's not researched properly, and it, it's way too much money for the volume of people that are going to use it. And that's based on who's been showing up to this point. I mean, even if you, if you double, 30 people are going to come out. I mean, that, that just doesn't make sense to spend a total of near $100,000, uh, regardless of the fact that it isn't coming out of the Grozeal tax money. Um, I... I you know, there's been too many projects. We have a we have an ice skating rink that was supposed to be a year-round rink, and it was used a little bit for ice skating this year, and now it's sitting locked up and full of water and leaves. Uh, I didn't. I have yet to see any inline skating being done there, and any other short of just seeing some advertisements that we have an inline rink. I don't see anybody using it, and I don't see any program for it. Uh, I know, I know everybody goes, well, this will draw people to grow zeal, but that's an empty statement because we don't know, we have no idea what it's going to draw to grow zeal. We don't know if it's going to draw anybody or if it's going to draw a lot of people. So we haven't done the proper research, I think, and I, I certainly would encourage my fellow board members to vote this down now and, and take our lumps and uh, uh, cut cut our losses but uh that well and that's that's what i have to say on it it's it's just too much money for too few people i'm going to take a slightly different tack this this being federal dollars specifically for universal access um activities and they're gonna they're gonna send that money somewhere because our elected representatives in, in the House and Senate said, you have this many dollars, and I know we're deep into deficits, but they said, you have this many dollars, we want it distributed to provide universal access. Get away from the, the, the disability saying, we're all going to be where we need, if we live long enough, we're not going to move as quick as we used to. Those, you know, we've got guys coming I'm back from there. Iraq that are in <laughs> bad shape there. too, but uh, um, to open these activities up to everyone. And again, as, as we start slowing down, myself included, um, I might not be able to go off, just toss in uh, or, or go slide down the stairs at the uh, East River uh, beach area. So 
the federal government, our elected representatives said, we want these kind of projects to happen. And it went through the chains and it came down to us. We have an opportunity to have a state-of-the-art universal access launch. It can't, well, I don't ever want to say that again, but I'm sure there's a downside somewhere, but I think it'd be an asset to our community. And as we're all getting older, um, it'll be an asset to us. You, well, me, and Tom. Well, <laughs> and, and certainly I think I'm, I'm already in need of, uh, of, uh, of help. But, uh, I, 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 you know, I, besides the cost, we, you know, we have, we've been shown no plans of maintenance, uh, and, uh, which is another thing we do around here is we build without the thought of maintenance. And, like, we'll just do it when it comes. And we got to stop doing that. We just got to stop doing that. But uh, I, I, uh, I, I probably feel like I'm the minority on the board on this one, but uh, uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm not necessarily. Mrs. Smith. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm not necessarily against this or kayaking. You know, I just, I, I struggle with the whole federal fund and the grant thing because I think, you know, there are probably other communities who are far more needy when it comes to these sort of things. Um, and I'd like to see other communities potentially benefit from from that. Um, I don't want to be the greedy community always with their hand out. Um, but I just wish that, you know, it's taken a year, and it, I don't necessarily know if anybody's missed it, and if not, then I don't know if there's anything we can do to, you know, I, I mean, I, it's like I hate going against it because I voted for it initially, but now it's like, okay, well, a year's gone by, and we haven't heard a peep about anything, and I don't know how if it's only servicing truly 12 to 16, and let's say there's another 10 to 15 per week. It's a very small portion of the population, and, and Mr. Budney has a lot of good points, especially when it comes to the maintaining of some of the facilities. Um, and knowing that there's a lot of other things that we sh could be putting money towards. I see kayaks go by almost every day. I'm just paddling by. On Tuesday nights, there'll be a flotilla. Um, every rest of the time, two or three at a time, always wave. Um, if it were easier to launch, I think we would see more. I remember a city park in Grand Ra or, I'm sorry, on Grand Traverse Bay in Traverse City where they had racks of kayaks. I'm going to say there were four racks with six each. They rent those, and people store their kayaks there so we have an opportunity there it's uh the paddle sports have continued to expand kayaking probably being the big, biggest single function of that canoeing the stand-up paddle board i don't know how they do that but uh i think we can get in the ground floor of it offer this opportunity to more people who want to try it and again there will be maintenance costs i think it'll i think will add to our marina complex um uh, are there plans for asset. expansion? Pardon? Are there plans for expansion outside of this? Possibly having rentals. I mean, are, are we thinking three, five, ten years down the road? That'll be oh. for that'll be for our, our recreation uh, director at that time, either to do it internally or right. bring in an outside vendor. Right. I'd, I'd love to see that. I'd like to see more people utilizing the Water's Edge recreation area. We just oh, have I so agree. much to offer there. But uh, I'm, you know, if there if there's a market for it, we'll get. Uh, our friends from Riverside Kayak, if they're interested, or somebody else could bid on it. But yeah. I think there's a real opportunity. I think that there's opportunity, too. I'm just a little conflicted just because it started with one rec director, and now another person is taking that through. And whether or not that was really or is the desire of the current rec director, you know, haven't really heard that side. Can I? Mr. Pose, yes. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Who? I saw a hand waving, but... That's mine. But Tom, okay. did you want to say something? Oh, Eric wants to talk. You want to talk? I want to talk, so... Go ahead, Eric. <clears throat> no, I was just going to say, Jim Jim definitely brings up some very good points, and I appreciate, the, you know, the, uh, the the fiscal mindset here, absolutely. Um, I, I think in this case, this is just an expensive project. If we want to do a first-class project that is accessible to all, that meets safety requirements for, basically, for an unattended site, um, it is, it, it, it costs money to do that. Uh, in this case, there are federal funds that are available through the Community Block Development Grant, and I can't really think of a better way right now than, than to spend the money like this, right? The, we've had, every time we do a master plan, the public wants access to water. We've given them access on the East River 
finally with a little park. And now I see kayaks lined up there, parked on top of trucks, which really they're not supposed to park in front of that. So, it, it, yeah, it, it's an expensive project. It's something we committed to a little over, a little under a year ago. Luckily, the team has gr- gone back and, and kept the cost creep that uh, was going to be huge and, and at least minimize that. So I'm, I am definitely in favor of the project. Thank you, Mr. Ranka. Uh, let's see, Bishop Posey asks. This has been a project that's been going on, not for one year, but for at least 10 years. I was on the Recreation Commission at the time that this was first proposed. Uh, there were several attempts to place a kayak launch or a boat launch in the canal and at several other locations. And it, it suffered from fits and sputters and lack of financial support and opposition from various groups. But uh, they've come down to a point now where the south end of this this beautiful marina is going to be accessible to not only just the people that are going to be disadvantaged physically, but to everybody. Uh, those those that are that are going to take the most advantage of it are going to be, I don't think, as many disadvantaged physically people as you think. I think there will be a lot of launches in that area, and. Whether it's going to be 20 or 30 or 50 or whatever a day, uh, a 10-year dream is now very, very close to becoming a reality. And when you think about that 10-year dream was based upon this conservation crescent that we have out on our river and the people that are going to be able to hop in their kayak and, and go see some of the remaining unspoiled shoreline, just for one example, I think that that's worth the price of admission. Finally, the, the community block grant funds are, are funds that we don't go in and demand. We put our suggestion in, and uh, someone goes out and says, you know, of all of the suggestions we got, Grozeal's got merit. You can't put a, a launch in a non-river community. Nobody else did that. Uh, I'm going to be fully in support of this, and I, and I, but but please understand especially Jim that I, you're you're the you're the economics guy and I know that you always ask those questions and, and bless you for it but we're going to vote separately on this one. Thank you Mr. Posey ask uh, Mr. Malvesto. All right I Jim Lauren I understand your concerns and I, I have concerns on my own but uh, let me assure you currently and I'll be bringing this before the uh, Rec Commission meeting that's coming up this week uh, I I have plans to build um, with volunteer assistance, three racks that will store each six kayaks each. Uh, total cost will be under $450 for, uh, for these three racks. They'll be movable, which means that in the end of the season, they'll be able to take them one end of the, of the marina or the other to make way for, for winter storage. Um, each one of those racks will generate, each one of those spaces will generate approximately $100 a year. The, rack will, the racks will more than pay for themselves the first year, and again, uh, this is all short of materials. It's all going to be done with volunteer help. Uh, after that, th- these racks will be generating almost two thousand dollars a year for maintenance of the ADA launch, as well as the uh, the current launch we have and the and the racks themselves. My fear is that once I get these built through volunteer help, we're going to need more, and I don't know who's going to I don't know who's going to build them. But let me assure you, whether I'm here for Another year or five years, I'm behind this project 100%, and I will do everything I can to make the the Water's Edge Marina facility pay for itself, support itself, either through the marina or the kayaks. That's my that's my goal. That's my drive. That's my vision, and that's what I'm pushing for. So I would ask you both to vote in support of this, based on my promise to you. Appreciate that. That that was helpful. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah, I, I I understand, and Tom's I know Tom's put put a lot of work in uh, down at Water's Edge as well as on this on, on kayaking and trying to bring it around. Uh, I, I of course uh, you guys know me by now, and I just have problems with with big dollars and uh, no real showing of what the return will be. And all the things that, that everything that's been said is is nice and is wonderful, but. What we're talking about is spending money on a project, and whether it's this one or another one, you have to look at 
how many are using it. I think the kayak launch we have now is probably uh, probably more than adequate for the, the use best one that, on we the get, river. that we get. The best one on the river. Yeah. And uh, and I have no doubt that you will continue to put your time in on it. And and I, you know, we, you've we've talked about those racks, and uh, that is a wonderful idea. Uh, uh, and uh, it's nice to see some money being generated to take care of something, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, I just have, a, I have, it's just too much money for too few people. Well, the the other side of this is, until we get until we get this launch installed, with your blessing. Uh, I can't begin to I can't begin to uh, promote and schedule uh, events for our for our veterans for for it doesn't matter whether it's veterans or, or any disabled group, but uh, once this is in place, with the support of the kayaking community in this area, who are just looking for a way that they don't have to transport their kayaks back and forth between their house and the launch area, uh, we'll give them that. But uh, there's there's other groups. Uh, there, there's groups over in the in the uh, um, uh, not Lansing. I'm sorry, in the Ann Arbor area, uh, Great Lakes Paddlers. They want they want to come over and they want to start joining us in our in our uh, uh, our, our kayaking activities. And uh, again, until I get it in there, I can't tell you how many people are going to end up using it. But I, I do know that to the uh, um, the handicapped com community, uh, you know, be it, be it veterans, be it just people in general i can't start i can't start planning yet until we get it in then once i once i offer it i think that i think it'll grow legs on its own and support itself so I, again I'm, I'm asking you to uh i understand where you're coming from but i'm asking you to support it I'll, one more question go ahead uh just uh are are we can we be assured that whether if it obviously if it turns out well and it draws people in, you're going to get the money, and you're going to have maintenance, et cetera. But can we be assured that if it doesn't work out, that the rec department will be taking care of the bill and not the general fund? All I can say is it's, it's part of the, it's part of the rec recreation department's responsibility at Water's Edge. Uh, yeah, and what I guess I know, what I'm know, asking Jim. is the, what I'm a, what I'm asking is the uh, you know w no. is the rec department willing to take Mr. care Mr. of Mr. Mr. Melvesto can't make that that'll be a decision made by this or a future board. Okay, I just I'll just promise you that as long as I'm here, I will put everything I have behind it to assure that it supports itself, and we have a good uh, we have a good showing. Okay, thanks, Tom. Okay, other questions, comments. All right, it was a good discussion though. Those in okay. Those in favor of approving the uh, shoreline work and universal access kayak launch installation project to Boat Hoist USA Incorporated, the amount of eighteen thousand six hundred and twelve dollars. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Not offered. Good discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Treasurer. Uh, anybody got anything against dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Love them. Bring them on. <laughs> got ferrets in there this year. <laughs> Have you got ferrets in there? <laughs> oh, enough of that. <laughs> this is an amendment to a policies and procedures uh, issue in our policies and procedures manual on dog licenses. The annual, we're changing the, we're rewriting it to say the annual fee for $6 will be charged for pet tags purchased before the month of January. Now, we do this to encourage people to license their pets at the beginning of every year fees past that month of February or month of January into the month of February will increase to $12 if a new resident or if someone purchases a new animal the fee will be $6 the old policy and procedure we had was pretty convoluted I mean there was 18 different sections and I think it was just a little bit overboard, so I'm just asking for approval to update our manual. Okay, moved by Treasurer Van Oss, seconded by Clerk Ranka, to amend the uh, the licensing fee schedule for the dogs that we all love. Uh, questions, comments from the board? None offered. Those in favor of approving the um, amendment to the policies and procedures, animal licensing fees, section 11.4, revised fees for animal licensing to be well, state has followed $6, and it's kind of a prorated charge. 
Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not offered? Oh, and if your pets aren't neutered, it costs more. I know we were getting to that. All right. That will, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that will conclude tonight's action items. I'll we'll move on to the clerk's report. Clerk Ranka. <clears throat> Mr. Supervisor, uh, the main action or the main item in the clerk's report today is the uh, the redistricting of the precincts, the voting precincts on uh, on the island. So we had been at six precincts. We're going to move it down to five precincts. A new voter ID card should be coming in the mail very shortly. And if you want to get a look at your, what your new precinct is going to be, if it even changes, uh, you can check it out online on the, uh, the website. The new uh, precinct, precinct map is already up. And that's my report for the, for the day. Hey, thank you, Clerk Ranka. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. For the month of May, Gross Hill Township had $11,400,519 invested in various accounts, generated an increase. A interest of just short of four thousand dollars, which was about a point three four. We could she's got thirty four percent there, but I'm sure that's not correct. Uh, current breakdown of invest investments are always available at the township's website or to grossfield.com. We have a very detailed uh, report on our investments and where they're at, and it's always available. Just it's on the website. You can come and get it at the, my office. Uh, the office is currently finishing up preparation for the 2015 summer tax bills. Uh, we are expecting the bills to be made, made out, mailed out to property owners the first week of July. Each Grow Seal property owner will receive the original 2015 summer tax bill directly from the printer. If you do not receive a tax bill, please contact my office to check if our mailing addresses and if all of that information is current. Duplicate bills will be mailed out to mortgage companies that request them for escrow accounts uh, they hold for the property owners. All right. We've got a 20th, 20th of next month, the Commerce Park meeting, and I have nothing else. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. We'll move on to trustee reports. Mr. Bovesto. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'm chuckling to myself. I, I, I apologize. Many years ago when the uh, Groziel Islanders were still uh, very active, they did a play called Little Abner, and one of the songs was The Country's in the Very Best of Hands. So I want to assure everybody, <laughs> the township's in the very best of hands. Uh, going forward, uh, there will be a uh, rec commission meeting t uh, Thursday night, right, Brandy? Oh, I'm sorry, Wednesday. Da -da, thank you. Uh, 7.30, as always. Uh, where I will be bringing forth before the commission a... Uh, my suggestion, my plans for uh, building these uh, kayak racks. And I'm, I've got a couple different gr volunteer groups that are uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, agreed to help out. And uh, hopefully uh, my, uh, uh, my committee and my commission will approve it. Um, as far as the fire department goes, uh, Chief Murdoch, same story. The townships in the very best of hands. These guys are great. I want to tell you, they are on a they are on a uh, uh, over 600. Call, they're, they're, right now, their averages of calls uh, it's going to be an over 600 calls this coming year. Uh, these guys are. What do we got? 27 active firemen, and these guys are making calls every. I mean, every day, daytime, nighttime. But uh, well, we're going to be over 600 calls this coming year. That's a lot of calls that uh, 27 men are doing, plus all the other responsibilities. These guys are great. We all know it. Thank you, Chief. Uh, got a great department. That's it, guys. Thank you, Mr. Malvesto. Move on, uh, Mr. Budney. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, as we wind down June, we do have a ZBA meeting tomorrow, two appeals. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to mention that the, our chip seal project is uh, coming to a close here. Uh, the, I think they're finishing up on the roads. Uh, and uh, they've put down the fog seal. Uh, they still have to line the roads and uh, put the lines on the roads, but uh, that's about it. But uh, uh, most of what I've heard back is, is good. People are, people are liking it, and it's uh, hopefully just a, a little taste of what's to come. And uh, I want to thank John Keim in the DPS department for a good job they did in, in uh, 
making sure that this uh, this got done. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Budney. Uh, Mr. Posey asks. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. You might want to go for a coffee break. I've got a lot tonight. It's all about Woody. Uh, <laughs> first things first, Greenway's open space. Next meeting will be July 7th. And uh, I wanted to, uh, based upon a request from Cliff, but I think a nice request, tell you about some, some volunteer work that's occurred. Uh, two of our trails, the Wildlife Sanctuary and behind the Playscape, got some extra effort from volunteers recently. On June 7th, the folks from St. Thomas Lutheran Church, uh, Pastor Eubank leading the charge, uh, put down chips on the Wildlife Sanctuary Trail. And people like Marcia Eller, Peter Rock, Maddie Holmes, Abby Eubank, and Ella Eller were there to help him. Ten days later, on the 17th, volunteers from the youth group at Sacred Heart Catholic Church and the Weeblos Den, PAC 1261, spread wood chips along the Playscape Trail. The group from Sacred Heart was led by Pat O'Hara, who was their director of youth ministry, and, and she also had volunteers, uh, Grace Taluki, Daniela Cruciani, Elizabeth Daly, and Joseph Castowney. The Weeblos, led by Tiffany Cleaver, their den leader, included, now I gotta work on this, Gray Kolodziewski, Braden Syraki, Christian Syraki, Wyatt Thompson, Andrew Modrzewski, and Wendy Modrzewski. This is all volunteers, all kids, and all spurred on by leaders with great heart. This community is in great shape for volunteers like that. So that's item number one. Bike Bath. Our next meeting will be July 21st. By then, you should have in your hands a request to review and, and approve bids to do the remaining pairs, uh, repairs to the bike path that we have that we have asked for estimates on. Uh, we should also see the bricks finished around the uh, fountain within the next two weeks. Just to mention for DPS, I think Grill Road is it's representative of all of the Chipsfield Roads. looks magnificent. Uh, August 22nd is our big day for us coming together as a community. Uh, you'll see some promotional materials popping out now pretty soon. They will be on Walk the Path, where we're gonna give away free hot dogs and lemonade like we did last year. And Tom Alvesto is escaping work by riding a bicycle that day. The Baradir event, uh, we've already seen in excess of 100 people register for the 100 mile route, which means they have to come through Grozeal. That should be exciting to see groups of five and 10 bicyclists doing full clip on, on uh, some of our roads. Uh, Greenway's Open Space we're gonna be, is going to be at that event on the 22nd, ragging about our soft pass, which I just told you about. And uh, DPS is going to be there giving a roads presentation, which is going to be uh, well, well received, I believe. This is going to be the second day of the island-wide garage sale. That evening on the 22nd, Sacred Heart Catholic Church is going to celebrate 100 years of being a parish with a, with a great dinner, and uh, tickets are on sale if you're interested. August 22nd promises to be one of those events that's going to show off Grozeal to its best. Cut your grass, wash your cars, sweep your streets, brush your teeth, comb your hair, and brag. we got a great community. This is the time to do it. Thank you. Can I say something real quick, please? Oh, sir. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. You had your chance. Last, last year, Wally and myself uh, kind of put together this walk the path. And uh, well, we, what did we serve, 200 hot dogs? So we, we were pretty happy with that. And uh, I am riding the, the Barador ride uh, this year. I'm not doing 100. My partner couldn't keep up with me. So I'm just going to do the 62. So I'm, I'm not going to be able to help Wally this year. But uh, thank you to the people who have uh, uh, chosen to uh, – Get involved with this. I, we we thought it was a great idea last year. We knew it would grow with time. Uh, Wally, thanks. You, that's it's going to be quite a day for you. I cook better than you. He does. <laughs> no doubt about it. He and does. I sing better than you too. Oh, Barry boy. Van England's going to be our entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, Wally. Thank you, Tom. All right, Mrs. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I wanted to announce that May twentieth. 
through the 22nd, 2016 is the next Island Fest. And it is going to be one week earlier. And primarily the decision behind that was mostly financial. Um, if we were to do it the same week, the Carnival Company could only deliver less than half of the Carnival rides that we currently are used to. Um, also, the Island Cup, which we know would have been a fantastic turnout over there on Saturday and Sunday had we not gotten the torrential rains that we did, um, has committed to being that same weekend, too. So it's a matter of working together and making sure it's successful for re everybody around. Um, speaking of successes, despite the poor weather, um, the festival has actually pulled off uh, a financial positive for this year. Um, it's looking like right now we're going to be about 5,000 ahead of the game. Um, previously, I, w I was much more concerned. We do have a couple more bills that are coming in. We're sitting at around 8,600 right now. We've got a couple more bills that are potentially outstanding out there. So, um, But I do have to give my hat to Chairman Chad Novak because he raised almost $12,000 more this year than previous year for sponsorships. And to me, that's tremendous. When you look at a total event revenue of $75,000 and a $12,000 increase is a pretty significant percentage of that, of that dollar figure. So um, Chad, if you're listening, thank you so much <laughs> from both for myself as well as the commission. And I'm sure that they've uh, commended you quite a bit. But um, that is it for my report. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, with that, Mr. Supervisor, oh, if I Mr. just Biden, may make may. a quick comment, I think I think that's uh, that's really something considering the weather we had this year for that weekend. Basically, you had one day, yeah. and uh, and they scored. Uh, so yeah, the tip tip our hats to that whole festival commission. Well, yeah, 2014 was a uh, was a watershed year. I mean, the the, the <laughs> festival changed dramatically and for the better. Yep. Uh, 2015, all the booths were leased out to well before the start of the event. Uh, the only feedback I got is, you know, we were getting the pumps in and trying to get the water out was the vendors who were there were still happy. They knew they were going to get rained out anywhere they went east of the Mississippi River. Right. <laughs> so, and the same with the carnival. They were going to get rained out regardless where they set up. So the vendors were leased indoors, and uh, everyone that I spoke to said, this is a great show. We're coming back next year. I said, well, get your reservation in early. Right. So good Good luck topping it next year. Hopefully uh, better weather, but going earlier, we'll see. We'll yep. see. But it was, it was just a lot of fun. Um, with that, let's see. We'll move on to a township attorney report, Mr. Asorti. Good. <laughs> Turn to the township, man township manager, Mr. Ream. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I just have a few brief items I'd like to touch on. Um, uh, Trustee Budney ex talked about the chip sealing program and the streets and the process. Um, and we surprisingly didn't have too terrible of an amount of complaints. There was some dust. It's a process. It's, it, it, I'll remind everyone where the cracks are filled. There's a slurry put in some of the low spots. They repair the asphalt in the major areas. Second step, they go through tar, lay down chips, which is a larger stone, roll it out. Come back through within hours, tar, and put a fine stone with a um, dusty mix in it, roll it out. And that's where you do get some dust. Driving 25 miles an hour versus 30 makes a big difference, believe it or not. Um, so we had some times in between before that fog seal, which is the black coating that you've seen on South Point, Grow, and East River, and the horse mill stretch, and then the East River stretch from Macomb to Ferry have not been um, fog sealed yet, which will happen next few days, depending on the weather, of course. But um, what I wanted to stress is communication. We've done a lot of things old school. Service. We sent out mailers. You're invited to open houses. We sent out memorandum reminders to the homes all along the stretch, and still some of them were unaware 
didn't pay attention or didn't remember, whatever the case may be. And obviously we have a map where we have other areas that we are proposing to do this in the future. But from a communication standpoint, sign up for Grozio Facebook, Grozio Police Facebook, um, Opportunity Grozio Facebook. All of that information flows through that inf th those social media sites. We post it online, we put it on TV, and we do our best to get the word out. And I think um, I, was, I was pleased that we didn't get tremendous amounts of complaints, but we did get some. And um, I think we can avoid that by continuing our outreach and people using what's available to us today. And if anyone knows, ask Mr. Fournier what I think of Facebook. Um, <laughs> it, it's just something that, that's today. So um, I think that that went, um, went very far. So, and uh, obviously the striping will be done in the other spots. And last item I just want to um, brief you on, um, um, on the recreation side, uh, the restaurant search, um, Recreation Director Boyd um, w is finalizing a questionnaire for the th three candidates that we recently interviewed. Here we're continuing that process and uh, should be um, before this board soon. So it is in process, and I wanted everyone to be aware. So thank you. Okay, th thank you, Mr. Rim. Um, okay, let me I'll wrap it up then. Uh, first of all, if you look at the overhead monitor, that was a, one of the thank yous I got. I thought that was just the best one. From the fourth grade tour, our uh, – Gosh, we have four fourth grade classes came through the Historical Society, put it together, and gave them a tour of uh, the, uh, my gosh, they saw some stuff at the, at the museum complex. They came through here and got a tour of the uh, uh, NASGI Museum, the photos and all downstairs, came up here, and we had a mock board meeting. They were just great kids. It was a lot of fun, and apparently... Uh, I got nothing but good response from it. So I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Tammy and Historical Society, for putting that together. And thank you to our fourth grade teachers for having such a great bunch of kids and parents. So anyway, that's where that came from. Uh, let's see. Okay, admin stuff. Grosio Township will be closed in honor of the 4th of July. But we'll close it on July 3rd. And it'll, uh, so it'll be uh, open again for business Monday morning at 8 o'clock. As Mr. Posiak mentioned, the island-wide garage sale Friday and Saturday, August 21st and 22nd. Uh, it's going to be a busy weekend. So uh, lots of people. Those of you who are not participating in the bicycle rides, the, other, the uh, garage sale, um, I know you'll have your usual welcoming attitude. Towards, we get nothing but good reports from visitors to the island. They love riding bikes here and. Yeah, I'm not a garage sale guy, but people who like garage sales, there will be hundreds of them. Um, and he covered, let's see, this is the stuff Carol gives me. So he covered the Lazy Summer Ride. I'll be out there for that. Concerts on the Commons are, are set to start this summer on uh, June 28th. And the first one will be side-by-side -side, Band of Banjos headed by former Islander... Al Alada and Bill Jackson, so that'll be June 28th, starting at 7 p.m. at Macomb Commons. There's flyers for this in the back of the room, also flyers for the other things we've announced tonight. And let's see, one other item. Maybe, I don't know, Chief, if you got any results from the firefighters' golf outing on uh, on the what kind of funds they generated. If not, it was... If you missed it, it was a good time. The weather was weather was conducive. Uh, I was very close to the lo loudest four ship on the golf course, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was really a great event. The West Shore uh, showed us a good time, good golf, good round of golf, good steak dinner afterwards, and it was a lot of fun. So if you missed it, you have to wait till next year. And that will conclude my comments. Uh, we've covered the uh, the. The crack, the the chip ceiling. First ones in Wayne County to try it, and I think for the kind of volume of traffic and the size of the traffic we have, it's going to be a great fix for our roads. And just optimistic, just optimistic. So we're spending your dollars wisely, folks. That will conclude my comments. With that, um, open it up to public comment. Don't let me down, Mr. Clark. 
monitor, so I hey. can't see them. Hey, uh, your uh, bills? Okay. What do you clear? Park Lane. Attorney fees um, to Katz, Seger, and Waisaki in the amount of $264. And O'Reilly Rancilio in the amount of $657. Talked about Facebook and uh, Google. They're your new NSA. Also, I'm getting a little sick of this training we're having at the bridge. Opening it, closing it, opening and closing it. They do it during daylight hours. It would be nice they could do it at night when there's not that much traffic. Yesterday, that backed up 20, no, 62 or 65 cars coming from Grozeal off. I didn't know what was behind me. Also, okay, Jim. Uh, I wish you'd have had as many comments when you were building the recreation building years ago when it cost all that money and we haven't seen any return and we're always in the hole. I wish you'd have been here then. I know you were here. You were on the board, I think. Weren't you on the recreational board? No, or, or, on the Water's Edge. Water's probably. Edge, Water's Edge board, right. Yeah. I wish you'd have been there asking them questions. Would have saved some, maybe saved us some money now. But you didn't. But anyway. Um, oh, the light at Parkway and the turnoff where the people sit there and wait and wait and wait. Today there was 25, no, 12 to 15 cars backed up. That's way too long of a time wait to wait for the people to stop it on Parkway. So maybe we could recheck the light. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Other comments from the public? All right, with none offered. Motion to adjourn. Support. Oh, motion and su motion by Trustee Posey, second by Trustee Buddy. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, none offered. Thank you, everyone. I'll call the meeting adjourned at uh, 828. Two to nothing, Tigers. Top of the second. Two to nothing. I